In this video, I will talk about the steps that you need to take to solve the control volume questions. The first step is read the question statement. This is very, very important, okay? In my experience, I've seen multiple issues where students did not read the question and they were finding something that I'm not asking them to find, okay? Or they don't know what the density is, so they're panicking, not performing well, although the density was written clearly in the question statement. Or the student doesn't know whether the invisit should be there or not. They think there's a problem in the question, etc., etc. So this is really important. So I would like you to be very careful about it. And you may think that the step is, oh, no, who is not going to read the question, right? Of course, I'm going to do it. But I mean reading to comprehend what the question is asking, what are the givens, what are being asked. So this is very, very important in my opinion, okay? And this can easily be avoided from your end. Step two is draw my control volume. Okay, so I have a control volume because I'm going to base my, all my analysis on how I pick my control volume. Okay, let's give an example over here. Let's say that I have, um, you know, let's start, stick with the example that we've been giving till the beginning of this video. And let's say that I have a plate over here, right? And I'm asking you what is the force on this plate because what will happen is the flow is coming over here. It's going to hit this plate, right? So now... What I mean by that is that I have several options over here. So I can go ahead and simply pick the control volume to be, you know, this section, right? Because once the flow hits it, it's going to fan out, okay? In 2D, it's going to be like a T-shape. So I can have my control volume like that. Or I can also include the control volume to be all the way to here. So the analysis will be different, but the final answer that I will get is, will be the same. However, the process will be very different, so it will completely be up to you to be careful in how you select the control volume. My general recommendation, do not include the solid into your control volume, okay? Focus on the fluid aspect of things, okay? Step number three. This is also very important. Uh, list clearly assumptions or special cases. For instance, is my flow steady? Do I see any time dependence in the question? Uh, can I take the density constant? What I'm asking is, is, is this a liquid? Or is this, if this is a gas, is the thermodynamic state changing significantly or not? Okay, so you have to evaluate this. Um, do I have uniform flow here? Or the velocity distribution is given to me? How about the weight? Can I just simply go out and neglect the weight of the uh, control volume? Right? How about the pressures? Is this a jet? Is this a within a pipe? Is it an open channel? So there's a lot of things that you will have to consider over here, okay? And the step number four, after you understand what the assumptions and special cases are, which basic principles I need to solve, okay? So I'm looking at what are the basic principles that I need to solve, okay? For instance, if I'm given the, I'm being asked what is the force to hold this plate in my previous example over here in place, then I definitely will be needing to use the conservation of momentum because that's the only equation that gives me some type of force relationship, okay? If I look at my cases, if I know my densities, velocities, however, there's one of the area information is not given then I will have to use my conservation of mass, okay? If I, if I know all my density, velocity, area information, all my inlets and exits, you don't have to evaluate the conservation of mass. If you do, you're going to get zero is equal to zero, okay? You're not going to get anything from that, right? So it's very important that you know which basic principles. Or in the future, we will talk about something called Bernoulli's equation. If I, do I know every single pressure value in my control volume. If not, maybe I can use the Bernoulli's equation to find the pressure, etc., etc. So this is really where everything comes together, step number four, okay? And the step number five is uh, basically apply step number four 
by taking step number three into account. For a control volume, we picked in step two. So you can see step five is the most comprehensive step, but it is not really a step. What actually is that? You're just simply going ahead and solving the questions and you're being very careful in the assumptions for special cases and you're only applying this to a particular control volume that you have selected. Okay, so this is a short video, but it is very, very important. I see multiple issues, so please, I highly encourage you to follow the steps that we have established over here. Okay.